Hello, DGRE partners and prospective DGRE partners. Uh, we know there's some of both and uh, welcome all. My name is Brian Holly, and for those who may not know me, I am president of Dark Corp Management Group. And uh, we obviously uh, manage all of our own properties as well as provide third party management company. I will be your host tonight meeting and uh, joining me will be David Tuttle. David heads our investor relations department and uh, may jump in from time to time if I ask or help me answer questions at the end. Uh, Darwin will not be joining us this evening as he is traveling and uh, will not be able to join us. Let me start out by saying we very much appreciate you joining us this evening. And we, uh, as we, as you hear us say a lot, we know you have a choice where you place your investment dollars. And we take that very, very seriously. Our driving principle is, uh, is to always make decisions that are in the best interest of the partners. And that's really the reason that that we have this meeting tonight and that we hold these monthly meetings uh, is to keep you, our partners, up to date, informed, and allow you to ask any questions about your uh, particular investment. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and start tonight. But let's, uh, let, let's start by reviewing our agenda. Again, welcome. The first thing I'm gonna do is just give a real brief uh, update on Oakview. Uh, nothing major there, but just a real quick announcement. All looking good at closing uh, this month. I'm going to spend the bulk of the time on the DGRE portfolio performance update, and that's where I'm going to go through each of the 15 properties. Uh, not, not a lot of detail, but give you some key performance indicators on each of the properties, uh, just to give you an idea how the property is going. If there's any uh, you know, major issues, I'll let you know at that time, but uh, there's really not, not a lot other than just giving you the performance indicator so you can see how you, your, your investment opportunity is performing. Uh, my favorite part of the night is when I uh, get to let everybody know uh, about the mailbox money checks that we're sending out to our partners. And in fact, uh, the announcement that I'll make tonight will be for October. And most of you already know because you probably already received your uh, ACH transaction, your direct deposit, and or your check. So, but uh, still a fun fun time for me to get to share that news. We'll certainly have plenty of time at the end of the uh, presentation for question and answers. I would invite you to go ahead and uh, ask and type in the chat box. Type in any questions that you may have as we go. At the end of the meeting, I'll go back and try to order all, uh, at. I'll go back in order in which they were submitted and try to answer all of the questions. And again, we'll do our best to get to all of the questions tonight. And if we don't, we'll get you some answers and uh, follow up with you personally uh, if time does not allow us to do that. So without further ado, we're gonna move on. Uh, well, let me give you the, the uh, Oakview apartment update real quick. And again, just very brief, everything is on track as those of you, um, who are in this project, you know that we had a zoning issue with the city and the property. Very minor issue, but something that the city had to correct. In fact, it's a little bit, uh, not funny, but it's a little bit humorous that uh, it wasn't the exact same zoning issue, but those of you are familiar with Gold Creek, also, which is the sister property to Oakview, had a zoning issue in the same city. Bottom line is they were able to take care of it and they are doing so here at Oakview as well. The 12th is the date that the city will uh, officially handle the zoning issue and get it passed so that we can get that closed. Our expectation is that we will close sometime between the 21st and the 25th of November. So I know that uh, if you're a partner, I know David and Garrett have been reaching out to you to get your money in. Need that in as quickly as possible. I think most of it's already in, but we do anticipate closing uh, right in the third week of November. So nothing but good news there, and Oakview Apartments will officially be part of the Darwin German real estate portfolio. So let's move right into our portfolio updates, and in no particular order, as I said, these are key performance indicators from July through October. And what you see here is I'm just going to kind of highlight the occupancy, the income, the net operating income, and then talk about a little bit, talk a little bit about rent delinquency. As you know, we are in, uh, we are still in the midst of uh, the COVID pandemic, and all of you know how that has affected uh, property performance throughout the year. We're glad to say that uh, we're, uh, we're operating very well. In fact, the properties, uh, each of the properties we're talking about are doing better 
uh, if you compare them to uh, the previous year. So while COVID has absolutely presented some challenges, we're finding ways to overcome those challenges and keeping the performance of the properties um, very positive. Uh, certainly it will get better when we can get through this and we have the ability to evict, uh, which is still kind of an iffy and I'll, I'll, I'll handle that really up front because it applies to all property, all of the properties. Uh, there's still, there's not an eviction moratorium in place, but there is what's called a CDC declaration in place. And that just allows a tenant of any property to file what's called a CDC declaration. And it means that if they meet certain criteria, then we cannot evict that tenant or we cannot move them out. We do still have uh, a fair number of people at each property. It's not a high percentage, but we do still have some that we just still cannot evict. However, some good news, uh, the eviction moratorium that ended in late July, we were able to start that in August. And as you, you'll see as we go through here, the positive signs of that, because we were able to evict a good number of people. In fact, at our last meeting, I gave you an update and told you that we uh, had evicted, at that point, uh, filed 30 evictions and had won 23 of those evictions in our favor. So that's good news. Now, every month we do still have people uh, filing the CDC declaration. But again, it's a manageable situation. Yes, it drives delinquency up and it's uh, delinquency. Obviously, we'd love that to be income as, as opposed to delinquency. But as you uh, will see as we go through here, really not a negative trend and uh, things are still moving in a positive direction. So let's start with Amber Vista. Again, you can see the uh, occupancy in the low 90s. Uh, income uh, still in the mid 10, you know, 10, almost 105 this month. Expenses in the low 60s range with your net operating income, high 30s to mid 40s. Uh, rent delinquency is continuing to crawl up there at Amber Vista. But again, almost all of these people have applied for CDC declaration uh, protection. So at this point, we cannot do a whole lot about that other than to hold them accountable for the criteria they have to meet. Moving on to Brookside. Brookside is uh, is probably, uh, well, I'll just tell you up front, you'll see the income is uh, not, not a good trend. However, we do not believe, and I shouldn't even say not a good trend, certainly was not a good October in our eyes. We do not believe this is a trend, however. There were a number of tenants. This is one of the properties uh, where we had tenants actually organize. You've heard me talk about this uh, in previous meetings where we had that actually organized and went around and talked to a lot of other people. And in most cases, they're telling them, you don't have to pay, the property can't evict you. What these tenants are finding out, and you'll see later as I talk about in Riverbend, it is just not true what they're telling the tenants. However, it is causing us some delinquency issues and some collection issues short term because these people believe they do not have to pay in some cases and that we cannot evict them. However, we are moving forward with eviction. We do have a higher number, a higher percentage of people at Brookside that have filed the CDC, but that doesn't account for all 18,000 of you see the delinquency. So we expect those numbers in November and December to start heading right back up where we want them to be. Income this month was uh, almost 265. You can see again, that is down a bit from uh, August and September. Expenses holding steady in the low 140s, net operating income, uh, mid 120s. And again, as I said, the rental delinquency is continuing to head up as these people think they do not have to pay. But as they get hit with the eviction notice and then realize, oh, I received some bad information, then uh, we expect to collect most of that. The corners, not much information here because we've actually had the corners for only one month. We took over on September 30th. Uh, that is our newest acquisition. Uh, just to give you a real brief update on the corners, the occupancy 92%. Income uh, 97 plus, expenses just under 40,000 for a net operating income of just under 60,000. Rent delinquency has not been a, an issue at this property, and we continue that. To, we continue, we expect that to continue uh, with just 1274 outstanding on uh, rent delinquency for the month of October. And again, just a reminder: the corners was acquired on September 30th. So congratulations to those partners who were in the corners, and uh, we certainly expect that to be a successful. DDRE partners as well. 
crossings, just again, a, a really consistent performer, mid 90s in occupancies, income again, just over 100,000 for the month, expenses holding steady in the high 50s, low 60s, with your net operating income in the low to mid uh, 40s. And your rent delinquency, again, this is a trend you'll see uh, as, as pe more people file the CDC declaration. This tends to be a, a short-term trend though, because again, once we let them know the truth and we tend to uh, collect a, a good amount of that. But rent delinquency was up uh, just over $6,000 at crossing in October. Gold Creek, um, and, and again, I'll, I'll point to just kind of a, an overall trend with the portfolio. We talked about this at, the, at our September meeting where uh, what you have is, is that a lot of residents, a lot of people out there, not just dark, not just uh, DGRE residents, but nation wide um, there is a trend portfolio wide where the income is slipping just a bit and again it's not a not a big trend we don't believe but it is going down a little bit and we we really believe that is due to the fact that there is no stimulus package what you have is is that people uh, the unemployment the extra unemployment benefits uh, have ended uh, and that's the extra six hundred dollars a week that many people uh, were given under the un unemployment benefits there's also, as you know, Congress has still not uh, given anything in regards to a stimulus in a while. And there are a lot of people banking on that. So we did see that's, that accounts for this trend down that you see. But again, not a serious trend down because the properties were overperforming over to begin with. Uh, we're still in good shape and can withstand that uh, temporary downturn. Income just under 275. Occupancy up in the mid 90s. Expenses in the 150s for net operating income of 123,000 at Gold Creek. Holly Nani, uh, nothing but good news here. Uh, as we told you before, you know, April through July, Holly Nani and Kanani both, which I'll get to here shortly, uh, really kind of suffered more than anybody due to the situation uh, on Maui. You know, the tourism industry is everything on Maui and they shut down, uh, the shutdown of the island really caused a lot of job losses and then the inability, inability to pay the rent. However, you can see a very, very good positive number from August, September, and October, where occupancy is back to 100%. Your income is back up to where we would expect it to be. Expenses holding steady with your uh, net operating income in the low teens. So nothing but good news now uh, to report in, in regards to Holly Nani. Kainani, really the same thing. Saw the same trend. Obviously, these two properties are next door to each other in Maui. So you would expect what affects one to affect the other. But again, as you can see, these numbers are right back up at 100% occupancy in August, September, and October. The income is right back up into the low to mid 20s with the expenses holding steady in the uh, you know, six, seven, eight range with the net operating income in the mid teens. So again, Ali Nani and Kanani, really good rebound and great job by them out there uh, once, uh, once the effect of the shutdown on Maui um, kind of ended. Ridgemar Plaza, again, you see very strong occupancy. You can see uh, the income continuously steady to, uh, steadily climbing, uh, going back to July 40, August 51, a slight dip in September, but in October right back up over 51,000. Expenses, again, in the high 20s, which is where we would expect it to be. Net operating income in the high teens to low 20s, which is where we would expect that property to perform. And again, just uh, rent delinquency, you can see in October, took another uh, increase. Again, this is just uh, people filing CDC direct declar declarations for protection and or people uh, counting on stimulus. In some cases, it's housing payments that are late, but really Ridgemar Plaza is performing as we would expect. Riverbend just again continues to be a steady performer, mid uh, 90s on your occupancy. Income remains right at the 170 level or above. Expenses in the uh, mid to high 90s with your net operating income in mid 70s to low 80s. And your rent delinquency again, same thing 14 in July, 16 in August, 11 in September, and then back up to 17 in October. One of the things that we can really point to and uh, or I would point out to everybody is, you know, if we could, if we were collecting about 80% of that rent, which normally on a property, 
that that's about uh, you know our delinquency is somewhere in the two three percent range what we try to strive for but even if we could just collect about 80 percent of that delinquency and had 20 percent versus two percent you can see where this property would be performing riverbend would just be a shining star because you'd be in the uh, 180s uh, in regards to income so riverbend continuing to hold steady and perform well Silver Creek, nothing but good news here. You can uh, see the occupancy is still mid 90s. Income continues to climb from just under 300 in July to uh, a little over 305 in October. So uh, October was our best month ever at Silver Creek. Uh, and I'd point out again, uh, you know, really the same thing. Really, where we want this property to be is somewhere in the 315 to 320 range in income right now. And if you look at the income and if we could collect, uh, you know, about 80 percent of that, uh, then we would be right where we expect to be. We would be uh, 315 to over 320 in collections, which is where we want to be in income on this property. Expenses, um, you know, really good month in October. We we're able to uh, really look at the expenses and uh, save in some places. Net operating income, as you can see, really healthy 170, almost 175 in October. One thing I've been pointing out in the last couple of months and just like to reiterate, uh, Silver Creek is one of those properties where we have interior rehab going on as part of our CapEx plan. Our gold to platinum interior rehabs have been paused for the time being. And the reason for that is, is that we just cannot get a big enough rent bump. If we're going to go in and spend five, six thousand dollars to uh, upgrade a gold unit to a platinum unit, we really need to see a fairly decent size rent bump and we're just not getting that the market is not supporting that right now so those gold to platinum have been paused which is really okay uh, as it says here we're focusing more on leasing to the current inventory level and we've been successful at increasing the income uh, without spending that five or six thousand for the interior upgrades the bronze upgrade or, or what some people call classics this was the lowest level units at silver creek we are continuing those we still have about another 20 that are currently as bronze units and we will continue to rehab those as they become available because we do get a sizable rent bump from those uh, somewhere in the 200 to 250 dollar range so those will continue to do southwest uh, as you saw in uh, august really uh what i like to say about uh, southwest is they had their kind of a reckoning month a little bit before everybody else did theirs was in august you can see incoming all the way down to forty five thousand with delinquency way up at almost twenty two thousand but since then they were just a little bit ahead of the curve i should say uh, but since then you can see occupancy has remained strong at 97 percent back up to sixty four thousand income in september uh, a little less than a little over sixty one thousand in october expenses holding steady in the mid 30s to low 40s with a net operating income in the high teens to low 20s and again rent delinquency continues to be an issue uh most properties not just this one but again it just points out the fact that when we're able to evict these people and hold the hold these people accountable and able to collect the vast majority of that rent delinquency you can see what that's going to do to our income which is uh, again just great news for for all of the properties. 1019, I'm always excited to talk about 1019. Those of you who are 1019 partners know the uh, tremendous success that 1019 has been uh, this year, really since uh, Dark Court Management took over. But again, just highlighting here that we remain very strong occupancy in the high 90s, income uh, a little over 129. And as I pointed out, we've been as high, if you look back in July, we've been as high as 138. I would just remind everybody that that we were still in lease up mode at that point and we had a lot of other income and when i say that that's your application fees for people moving in uh your admin fees for people moving in your risk fees for people moving in so that's i don't want you to see that this is a big drop from july it's just that as you become full and become fully occupied then you that other income drops while your rent obviously goes up um, your rent collections uh, goes up, but your other income drops. So really where you see 1019 in October is where we expect this to be. Somewhere in the 125 to 130 range is where this is going to consistently be. So we're uh, thrilled with those numbers. Expenses, again, uh, sub 50,000. So great job there. 
there. Net operating income, very healthy. You can see that just continues to climb uh, from the mid 60s up into the, I'm sorry, yeah, from the mid 70s up uh, to just over 80,000 in October. Rent delinquency, it's a uh, totally different demographic and we really don't have a rent delinquency issue at 1019. Uh, that's a testament to the manager and the staff. And again, just a little bit different, uh, quite a bit different actually demographic that we deal with there. So rent delinquency is not a big issue there. This will probably be my last reminder to you, but just again, celebrating for those of you out there that are 1019 partners that the refinance process at 1019 was completed in August. And it returned uh, right at 27% of the original investment. Uh, in 12 months, there'll be an additional 7 to 8% return of capital uh, once the principal and interest escrow that we have to set aside at the refi is returned to us, at which point we'll return that to the partners. And then those of you who are in 1019 already know that distributions to the partners were started in September. So uh, just thrilled about that. The other piece of good news about 1019 is due to COVID, our short-term rental or what we call the Airbnb units uh, really came to a complete standstill. Nobody was traveling, nobody was renting B&B units, uh, but it has really picked up the last three months. We're averaging around $5,500 for the last three months and that continues to go up. So really excited about those coming back online and performing. Valley Center, which is our office building where our offices are located. Uh, you, you can see the occupancy is just remaining uh, as is. Uh, we've had uh, a few tenants move in, a few tenants move out, but it's just, uh, you know, it's right where it is. As I said, as I've told you before, the occupancy at Valley Center is based upon square footage as opposed to the number of units you have, which is how we gauge it in the apartment world. The income, uh, you can see in October, a little over 120. Expenses, 58. Net operating income, 62. So if you look across from July through October, you just see really steady numbers. Again, I would just point out, uh, August looks like it was a really huge month, and it was, uh, but, but I would uh, tell you that July and August performed a little bit because we were still collecting 2019 charges from the previous owner. So July and August are a little bit inflated, and uh, September, uh, between September and October is where, really where we expect this property to level out. Delinquency, I uh, want to point out to delinquency, I've got it on here, but I also want to remind everybody that part of our buying this property, we negotiated a rent guarantee from April all the way through September, so for the first six months. Uh, the good news is, is that we were able to collect the vast majority of the delinquent money, uh, but there was just under 20,000, a little over 19,000, that was not collected in that time. And the good news is we've submitted that and have received that money from the previous owner uh, to make us good on the guarantee. So we didn't lose any, any of the rent delinquency or total delinquent, uh, any from uh, April through September, we've been made whole on that. So uh, great job of negotiating by Darwin and David and getting that in there to protect everybody. If you haven't seen the property, please come by and see it. The lobby remodel has been completed and the remaining the remaining CapEx project includes signing, we still gotta get done, elevator remodel and some minor issues. But uh, really excited about Valley Center and we'd love to show it off if you wanna come by and, and uh, take a look at it. We'd love to talk to you about it. Miller Creek, uh, again, very, very solid performer. You see that uh, the occupancy is in the high 90s. Income Income continues to climb. The income, um, the biggest reason for the income increase is because as uh, those of you who are in Villa Creek or have attended these meetings are aware, we had two tornado buildings and those came back online at the first of uh, June and then the other half came back on in July. So we leased those really quickly. Glad to, to announce that all 14 of those down units are now occupied. But because we were able to rehab those units to a higher level, we got a significant rent bump. On average, about $150 more in the monthly rent bump for those units that were affected by the tornado versus the same floor plan uh, that's on the rest of the property. So that's the biggest reason you see the income driving up is not only your application admin and risk fees for those people moving in, but we have higher rents now uh, on those 14 units. Expenses, a little higher. We had some uh, plumbing and, 
and uh, uh, well, really plumbing issues, uh, at, uh, which is not unusual at a property this age, but a very, very healthy, you know, still mid 70s net operating income. And I just can't say enough about the staff there. At, look at the rent delinquency in July, August, September, and October. This is what happens when you have a, a manager that is really attuned and has kind of formed a community and really knows every single one of those residents. Our manager here has been on that property for five years, knows every single one of them, and he just makes sure that they, uh, they pay their bill. So kudos to the staff there. Uh, kudos for, to Vicki for the direction she's given them, but uh, four months now in a row that Villa Creek has closed out with zero in rent delinquency. And um, for those of you, I think most of you are aware of this, but we have been considering putting Villa Creek up for sale. I just want to let you know that we have started the process to provide the information to the brokers to list Villa Creek for sale. So don't have any firm information for you on that other than just to uh, Darwin wanted me to make the announcement and let everybody know that we're starting that process. So more information to come. It's uh, exciting for the Villa Creek owners. 2405 at Park Row, formerly Greenhouse, uh, one of our co-sponsor um, properties uh, with Reggie Bedos. Uh, Reggie's doing a great job there. And again, I'd just like to point out some uh, recent successes. You can see that through the worst of the COVID situation or as, as they were able to go in and evict people or people actually learn, okay, now they can evict me and I've got to get out. In some cases, they just flat out skipped. But that's why you had the drop in occupancy from 85 down to 80, which you can see that's re headed right back up where it needs to be as uh, management and Reggie work hard there uh, to get the occupancy back up after those people have been evicted and or skipped uh, up to 88% in October. Income back where we would expect it to be in the low 30s, which is obviously a, a function of the occupancy going up and people moving in. Expenses, really good expense management in the mid teens for a, a very healthy net operating income of just under $15,000 in October. Uh, this, pro this property is not any different than the rest of them uh, in regards to rent delinquency. We still have rent delinquency issues, but again, I just point out that uh, we're managing those well. We're not letting it drag the property down. And when we're able to collect the majority of that rent delinquency, you can see how much better the properties are gonna be doing at that point. So my favorite time of the night, favorite time of this meeting is when I get to uh, announce, and again, most of you, those of you who are uh, our partners in these properties, you've already received your direct deposit and or ACH transaction. Those of you who still enjoy to get that physical check in the mail, uh, those have been mailed and you should have uh, received or will receive those very shortly. But for the month of October, here's Darwin again, driving the mail wagon and dropping off your check. And here are the properties that uh, we sent distribution. So you should have already been notified of this. In fact, I'll point, point out one other thing here as we talk about Amber Vista, Brookside, Crossings, Alinani, Gold Creek, Kainani, Riverbend, 1019, and Valley Center. All, if you're a partner in any of those properties, you would have received your distribution check for the month of October. I would also let you know just kind of a fun thing that we started about three months ago. And if you want to be part of it, uh, we just need to get your phone number. What we do is when we process these, uh, these distribution checks and or your ACH direct deposit, we send you a text notifying you that, hey, we just sent out another uh, distribution check from Amba Vista or, or Brookside or Crossing. I actually have, uh, we have a few investors who have called and said, Ryan, do I really need to get them for all of them? And then he said, on second thought, no, keep sending them. So he got like seven or eight texts right in a row. And uh, fortunate for him, it's great news because he was in uh, all of those properties. But it was a nice thing to have. If you would like to receive that text, we just need to get your phone number. Because obviously we can only send the text to the people that we have a phone number for in our uh, CRM database. I can assure you, we do not give anyone access to phone numbers and or emails. The information you provide to us is for our use and our use only, and we do not share that with anybody. Despite uh, getting asked to share that, we just absolutely will not. That's a commitment we make to you. So your information is never gonna be shared with anyone else uh, from us. So send us your email, I mean, your uh, phone number, and we'll be glad to put you on that list for a fun text at the end of each month on uh, 
the properties uh, where you're getting a distribution. Thanks, Darwin, for delivering those. Okay, what is on the horizon for DGRE? Well, I don't have any uh, big announcements to make. I would just like to point out that as you've heard us talk about before, for. We are constantly analyzing properties, whether it's Julian here in the office, uh, Darwin here in the office. I mean, looking at properties on a daily basis. Uh, we have uh, a few that we're working on that look promising. However, we don't have any announcements to make. So uh, those of you who might have been expecting that, uh, don't have anything uh, that exciting to share other than just know that we do have a couple that look promising and we're uh, working feverishly to work out the numbers and make sure they are absolutely good investments. As you know, we are very, very conservative in our underwriting, very, very conservative in our pro forma to make sure that uh, we can put more properties on that distribution list that you just saw so that all of our uh, partners are receiving uh, up to their expectations. Having said that, I'm gonna open it up for question and answers now. And, um, while I have that, I'm just gonna put up a screen that shows David and Jeremy. Uh, these are our investor relations people. If you have any questions in regards to any of our current investments on how they're working out, great. Or if you would like to find out how you can participate in any future opportunities and you wanna get on a list, uh, what we've, uh, those of you who uh, had an opportunity to get into Oakview, those of you who had an opportunity to get into Corners, realize that those went very, very fast. In fact, the corners was about a 48 hour process and filled up very quickly. So if you're interested in getting in on uh, future opportunities, uh, what I would suggest is contacting David and or Jeremy and get your name on a list and let them know uh, because these properties are going really quick as they're coming available. And uh, we don't want you to miss out. We want everybody can get in. So I'm gonna go to a question here. Let me get back to the beginning. Uh, first question is, how are the short-term rentals at 19 going? Okay, uh, that was probably typed in before I got there, but they're actually going very well. For those of you who don't know, 1019 has four short-term rentals or B&B units. And uh, like I said, during COVID, they, they went down to zero. We had zero income coming in for about four straight months. Nobody was traveling, nobody was uh, staying in the uh, short-term rentals. And that wasn't just us, that was uh, nationwide, worldwide, for that matter of fact. Uh, but as I said, we've been averaging about 5,500 to 6,000 for the last three, four months. So that's a really good sign. Uh, I, I'm fortunate enough where I get to see every, uh, every time somebody books, I get a notice email that's telling me, and it's just exciting to see those emails come in for two, three, four, and five, uh, five night bookings. So they're actually coming back very well. Next question, are there any lawsuits against the CDC on evictions? Great question, Phil. Um, there have been lawsuits filed, however, none of them have uh, come to any resolution. Uh, in fact, the only thing that has changed, I think, since we talked last about the CDC declaration is when we talked in September, I'm sorry, early October, then we still did not have the ability to evict if they filed a CDC declaration. That's changed a little bit to answer your question. We can still file eviction on someone who has claimed CDC declaration protection. However, we cannot put them out. We cannot set them out and it's not going to, we cannot get the writ to actually set them out. So you might say, well, what good does it do to file the eviction if you can't put them out anyway, even if the judgment goes in your favor? Really good question, but there actually is an advantage to it and we are filing evictions on many of those who are filing a CDC declaration. But what it allows us to do is to get on the court docket so that we don't have to wait until last minute. This puts us on the docket and it just sits there. It also gives us an opportunity. Keep in mind that if you file, if a tenant has filed CDC declaration, they must meet criteria. Really the only one that counts to us is that they are making a good faith effort to make us payments on a monthly basis. So we may have someone that filed CDC declaration and made a payment, but if they don't pay the next month, guess what? That eviction has already been filed and we can get it on the docket that much quicker. Uh, if they, uh, and we do have some that have made one payment or two payments, and then we have some that don't make any payments even though they have promised to pay. And we have had one example where 
we took back to the judge, I believe it was at Riverbend, and said, look, these people filed CDC declaration protection, they promised to pay, but they haven't paid anything in six months. They are making zero effort. And guess what? We were able to uh, win the judgment and put that tenant out. So there is an advantage to go ahead and filing the eviction. It's automatically abated by the court, but we have the ability to then react quickly the following month if in fact they don't meet all of their criteria. So great question there. How is it going with taking tenants to court who aren't using best efforts to make partial payments? Oh, great. thank you for the lead in. I think I just answered that. <laughs> um, any updates on Village Oaks? Okay, Village Oaks was a, uh, was a property uh, when you say update, I don't have any performance updates because again, we've had that for less than a month. Village Oaks, for those of you who don't know, is a property we were about to roll out. It's a co-sponsor uh, property. It's uh, in Dallas and the co-sponsor raised a lot more money. You know, our co-sponsor agreement is they raise about 50%, we'll raise about 50%. It's still a DGRE property. We're still managing it. We're still overseeing the property to make sure it performs. But the uh, the co-sponsor raised all, uh, uh, well not all of it but a uh, very healthy chunk of it and it literally uh, was gone uh, just a few minutes after we put it out there so that's the reason many of you may not have seen Village Oaks it just literally as soon as it went out it filled up it was very it was only a million and a half dollar raise to begin with and like I said the co-sponsor raised the vast majority of that so it was very very quick but we do have Village Oaks under ownership and under management and look for that on our December update or January update, depending on whether we have a December meeting, uh, and I'll be able to give you performance updates on Village Oaks. Okay, it says uh, expected first distribution for the corners. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Typically, uh, it's not unheard of, uh, but it's pretty unusual to have that again. We've only had corners for one month. Really what we need to do is is have that property settle in. And when I say that, it's not like Goat View where we've had, you know, when we take that over, that's gonna be a little bit different situation because we've had management there for over a hundred days by the time we take over Oak View. Corners were taking over from a previous management company. We really need a good 60 to 90 days to vet that property, make sure that it's running the way we want it to run. So far, good news. There's no reason to believe that there's any issue, but, one of the things that we do too is we go in and realize immediate savings uh, from our more efficient management than most previous management, and that will affect the amount of distribution too. So again, uh, be patient with us on corners. It usually takes about 60 to 90 days before we process the first distribution for uh, new properties. Next question, is, is cost segregation going to be done this year on the corners? The answer is absolutely yes. Any any and all of our acquisitions, uh, we will look at seeing whether cost segregation makes sense. So all of the properties that were acquired uh, so far in 2020, absolutely, we will start that process right after the first of the year because, as you know, they only affect uh, your your uh, your taxes for 2021. So absolutely, the answer is yes. Our strategy is to do cost segregation on every single property to maximize your uh, depreciation. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit here. CDC declaration is only for non-payment of rent. Are you trying to event problem tenant for reasons other than non-payment of rent? Uh, really good question and the answer is absolutely yes. You are correct that the CDC declaration as well as the eviction moratorium before it only protected them from non-payment of rent. Um, we could, and again, we had one property where we found that somebody was selling drugs out of the property. Guess what? We evicted them, had no, no problem evicting them. So if they are a problem for the property causing danger to residents, nuisance, then the answer is absolutely yes. We can still evict people, even if they're under CDC declaration, for other reasons other than non-payment of rent. How do we get tax documents for Oakview? Uh, and how do we set up new mailbox funds for Oakview as we are new to DGRE? Okay, great question. Uh, tax documents, of course, um, if you Oakview, we're closing here in about two and a half weeks. We will have that property for what, about five, six weeks. 
uh, in 2020. So you will absolutely uh, get tax documents. Those typically we have those out by uh, early to mid March of the following year, so that you've got to, you know, we'll send you your K1 for the property. Uh, those will be sent to you if you if you are a partner, you already have an account with us in uh, IMS, which is our investor management services. And as you know, um, we we uh, send those directly to you via email, or you have the ability to get those through IMS. Uh, but if you are a partner, those expect all of those to be completed and in your hands by mid-March of 2021. Uh, the second part of that question was, how do we set up for new mailbox funds? What I would do if you're new to DGRE, as this one uh, intimates, reach out to uh, David Cuddle. His name is right here on the uh, on the screen and let him get you set up with an IMS, IMS account. That's where all of our communications happen and that's where you'll be able to access any investments that you get into. Um, so you'll be able to at that point, for example, go into IMS and set up a direct deposit account for these mailbox money checks. Hey, do we have any me... updates on Southwest? Yeah, go ahead, Brian, David. This, yeah, this is David. Let me jump in on that. Um, you're actually, uh, one of the um, protections that we've taken to fight wire fraud is we do not um, allow uh, allow you to make a change to your direct deposit information in IMS. That's a manual process. So if you would like, to, instead of receiving a paper check, we all love the mailbox money check, if you'd like to have a direct deposit, email me, david at darwingerman.com, and I will send you a form that you'll have to fill out and return to me, and we will manually manually set you up for direct deposit. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, David, for that reminder. Yeah, it's just a uh, to protect protect everyone from fraud. So we would actually make the change in your account for you. But contact David, and he can get you uh, the information that you need. Next question, is there an update on Southwest Apartments? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what update you want. So type in another question. I know we went through it. Uh, so you can see the performance uh, over the last four months. You're right, Anand was the co-sponsor on uh, that property and uh, doing well. Uh, view numbers. Um, what I can tell you is the, the reason that I don't have Oakview on here is because we do not have ownership of Oakview yet. So really any numbers or uh, any performance numbers that I give you don't really relate directly to you. They relate directly to the uh, to the previous owner. What I will tell you, uh, having met with him last Friday, is actually, uh, I'll go ahead and share this with you, what he said. He said, you know, I probably should have waited a few months before I sold this property because now under door court management, that property is worth about $2 million more than it was when I sold it to you. Well, it's one of the reasons that we settled on a price before we purchased Oakview. We knew and felt confident that our uh, our management team was going to be able to increase the performance there and increase the value. So, uh, Ashish, uh, wait one more or actually two more months. We take over Oakview at the end of November, so we'll have our first uh, first look at Oakview performance numbers. Having said that, Ashish, if you'd like uh, if you'd like current numbers, I'll be glad to provide them. Just shoot me a quick email, let me know what you want, and I'll be glad to provide those to you. Uh, okay, let me, sorry, just grab scrolling through. Uh, if I, I'm not an investor in Villa Creek, but just curious with it performing so well, why was it not on the mailbox money distribution list? Great question, and thank you for the opportunity. I should have explained that. Here's why. We had to dip into the reserves at Villa Creek to pay for a lot of the insurance proceeds um, with the tornado damage. It's not money that we're gonna be out of pocket. It's just that our our check, which by the way, is a little less than half a million dollars, which we're still expecting from the insurance company and should have any day. We actually got verification that they've approved it about a week ago and said it could take up to 20 days, but we had to cover a lot of things. For example, asbestos remediation was $100,000. Uh, just one example. We had to pay for some mobilization of the contractors. So the bottom line is, the Villa Creek operating account paid for a lot of things that insurance is going to cover, but until we did that final setup, which again, a little less than half a million dollars, and until we received that check, the, the operating account at Villa Creek was a little light and we just felt it in our best interest uh, to not distribute that. 
Uh, so I hope that answers your question. It has nothing to do with the uh, performance of the property. We just want to make sure we're always protecting our asset. And we do expect that big check from the insurance company uh, within the next week or so. And we'll be right where, back where we need to be. Okay, uh, excellent point about Oakview. Um, thank you, thank you from Dan. Lots of thank yous for the update. Um, somebody made a comment here, it just says, thank you for the updates. I am in several other uh, multifamily properties and it's like pulling teeth to get updates. So thank you for your efforts. Uh, I would just say to you, Dan, thank you for the comment, but uh, it, uh, we take it very seriously uh, that you have decided to place your trust in us. And we absolutely take that extremely seriously. As I said before, our motto every day when we talk about is what is in the best interest of the partner. So these monthly meetings is, is an attempt to keep you exact as updated as we possibly can so that there are no surprises. So again, thank you for very much. Also want to let you know that every meeting that we have, including tonight, is recorded. Um, just got a question about that. It is recorded. And in fact, you will receive um, if you're on our if you're on our list, our uh, distribution list, and in our CRM tool, you get an email every Thursday. It's called the DGRE newsletter. This Thursday, you will see that the very first article on that newsletter will be a link to this recording. So every month, we do record these presentations, so you can go back and check them if you want to, uh, and to make them available to uh, everyone that's in our database. So that seems to be the end of the questions. Uh, David, you got anything else you want to add here before I shut it down? No, the only other thing I'll add is uh, a lot of you may uh, have noticed that we don't email uh, wiring instructions. Anytime you need to submit funds to us, uh, when you go through the e-signature process and IMS, you'll get an automatic response with wire instructions. Otherwise, either myself or Garrett Stroud will text them to you directly. So just a little housekeeping item there uh, in the investor relations department. Thank you, David. That's very important. Very, very important. Um, Okay, uh, as you see, David and Jeremy here on the screen. So as I said before, if you have any questions about our current investments or you wanna know how to participate in future opportunities, please reach out to us. Uh, we'll get to you real quickly on whether we'll have a December meeting. We typically have not had a December meeting, but we have really a lot of good news to share about uh, what's happened for uh, not only DGRE, but for you, our partners in 2020. So we may do something uh, short and sweet in uh, 2000, uh, in December as kind of a celebration. So again, thank you all. Email me uh, if you uh, have any additional questions, anything in regards to investor relations, email David and we'll get right back to you. So thank you again for uh, joining us tonight and we'll talk to you next meeting.